you for being connected here today. I am talking with Kelsey. Kelsey, thank you so much for being part of the program. Thank you so much. I'm super excited to connect with you and have this conversation. And for anyone listening, you are in, you're hearing Mexico. <laughs> That's what you're hearing, but yeah, we're good. <laughs> Kelsey, for those who aren't familiar with the work you're doing, let them know about yourself. Yeah, so I am a life and business strategist, but more on a spiritual level. I run a, what I call a school of ascension. So I teach like really deep healing, uh, different spirituality, and I also help people like build their dreams, build their brand, build their business. I have a pretty, yeah, it's like wherever you feel stuck and whatever it is that you want to build, we're going to get you there. So strategy to me is a defined number of steps to obtain a breakthrough moment. How do you define strategy? Yeah, so that's so interesting. And I was literally just on a call with my students today and we were talking about different strategies. And I think that for me as well, strategy is being able to have consistent results, right? So if you just, um, you're walking down the street and you meet someone and there's this opportunity and now you're invited on a podcast, that was like a fluke. It was luck. That's not a strategy. And we can't teach that and we can't reproduce that, right? So we're a strategy. And to me, it's so important. Embodiment is so important. Anyone can regurgitate strategy that you're learning in a book or from a YouTube, but to actually do a strategy over and over, see the clear results and then teach it, that to me is real strategy. Mm. I really, I really like what you're saying because so often, like you said, it's like, People kind of theorize on what could be a good strategy, but the practitioner is the person who sees that continual growth. Totally. Yeah, exactly. And that to me is very much, we're taking the knowledge and we're bringing it down. So right? for, for that individual that is thinking about putting, you know, putting boots to ground, maybe starting a business, maybe transitioning in their life, maybe flying to Mexico like you are right now, what would be some basic strategies to just get going? I think sometimes the hardest part is just get going. What would be some basic strategies yeah. to just get started? Yeah, well, interestingly enough, my favorite thing is don't think, just do. Like, at one point, you have to make a decision in your life. Like, I'm done thinking. I'm done moving through my mind and my limiting beliefs, all these things. And you really just, like, there are multiple times in my life where maybe I'll settle more into the inner work, the inner mindset, what's holding me back. And then I'll move into a really a period of action. So it's like, just take the steps. So book the flight, whatever it is. And for me, it's constantly working with the unconscious mind. So you close your eyes and you ask your unconscious mind, what is the very... Like, what is the next step? What is the thing that I have to do right now, today? And literally go do it. When we talk about strategies, when we talk about accomplishing our goals, so often people overlook the spiritual side of things. And we get so caught up on being human doings as opposed to being human beings, let alone yeah. even considering our spiritual side of things. So talk about the alignment or the integration and harmony that needs to take place in order to actually put into action those strategies. Yeah, and I love that. That's such a good question. I just made this post about what manifesting is in my world because manifesting is just alignment. So most people, they're like, okay, part of me wants to build a business Part of me wants to stay at the career that I've already built. Part of me wants to move and start a new life in Mexico. Part of me wants to stay here. And what, oh, what we need to understand is that one of the parts is in alignment with what you're truly here to do. And one of the parts is more so ego fear. So we really have to learn to discern and really understand which part is running my life right now. Because, you know, for anyone who's listening, you're... 90 to 90 percent 90 to 99 percent of your thoughts actions habits behaviors are unconscious so which part is it the fearful part or is it the aligned part so when we're doing that work and when we have we're like okay i'm going to take an action the first answer is the aligned part it's like book a flight then your ego goes oh but i just moved into this apartment or blah, 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 blah. that's your ego that's the fear that's the part of you that's afraid or whatever it is so we really want to make sure that we're in with that part that's aligned. And to me, it's the part that's aligned with God or universe or source or the whole world, whatever you want to call it. But so when you're moving in alignment with that thing inside of you, 
nothing can go wrong because you're moving in alignment with all of life itself, right? How much of that is instinct? How much of that is maturation? How much of that is just gut feeling or spidey sense? Yeah, it's so interesting. So I do feel like a lot of it is intuition. I do also think like I've been in business for five years and there's been a really big like maturation process, as you've said, where I didn't know how to discern between intuition and sabotage or intuition and fear because for some people moving to Mexico is the most expansive, best decision they can make. For others, moving to Mexico is them running away from their problems mm. and it's the worst decision they can make, right? Right, right. So there's a maturity there for sure. Talk a little bit about, if you can, about deciphering that part, right? Because you said, well, being in alignment is most often that is it's it's that innate reaction. It's it's this is what I have to do. And of course, the ego comes in, as you mentioned. But talk about being able to decipher, OK, am I heading somewhere to to grow or am I just trying yeah. to run away from everything else? Yeah. So and it's like it, this is, again, discernment is really intense because mm -hmm. intuition and sabotage like. I tell my clients, I tell my audience that I've been in the past the queen of self-sabotage. I'm on a high road to success, speaking in LA, all these things, and just tear it all down. And I will convince myself that that's the right move. I'll convince myself of the craziest things because understand that your unconscious mind is trying to protect you. So it knows you better than you know yourself. So it knows, hey, this guy, um, the only thing that's going to be able to get him to stay is if he falls in love with this girl next thing you know this beautiful girl shows up and you're like what's going on here and it's a big <laughs> distraction right so i think that it's like a looking at our patterns looking at our life being super honest with ourselves like why did i make that decision in the past why did i do that um really kind of digging deep like what are the lessons what actually made me leave that relationship or leave that job or do this thing or not build my business or not post something on social media so I think we look at it kind of in a, a little bit more of a logical way and then on another level when we're feeling into these things if there's a hint of fear and joy so you feel afraid but there's like an excitement that's a beautiful sign that like this is where you're meant to be headed when the new year starts, most often individuals start doing their new year's resolution or they establish goals. Others will instead select a word and this word will be what anchors their actions throughout the year. In that particular yeah. spectrum, where do you lean towards? Is it the goal setting and resolution or the one word? Yeah, and it's funny because like I, I do both. So this year my word is focus. Um, because you can get so much done if you actually just like <laughs> sit down and focus, right? <laughs> um, like it's just crazy what we can actually accomplish when we just do the things. Right. But so focus, but then I also do set goals. But what's interesting for me is that <clears throat> by Q4, right? And like we're in November, December, I'm already thinking, like I'm already moving towards the goals that I want to be headed into January. So like I've already started, like my New Year's resolution, like I don't wait until the end of the year. Like in November, I'm already thinking, oh, it's like January is there. <laughs> How do I make sure that I end the year really solidly and that I'm already moving into what I want to accomplish in Q1? So, because again, like, you know, a friend of mine and I were talking yesterday and I'm like, well, just make sure that like next week you eat really clean. And she's like, no, tomorrow. And I'm like, yeah, tomorrow. Like, why are you waiting till next week, right? <laughs> But it's just like, for sure, like, do it now. But I do totally believe in goal setting and I do love it. But I do think that there is, and I do think that there is a beautiful collective momentum in January, beautiful collective momentum that can really help people kind of move forward. I think that this is where we just have to be honest with ourselves and hold ourselves accountable and stick with that word and stick with those things, right? Talk about momentum for a moment here, right? We that's, as you said, January comes around, new year, new me, everybody's in that environment. How do we maintain that momentum from a spiritual standpoint, not just physically moving, but actually being aligned, as you mentioned? Yeah, well, I think that maintaining, so A, momentum is like, for me, it's the biggest thing in my life. Like, the, my thing this year is just keep riding that wave because when that wave of momentum hits, 
you really do it. It's like you're grabbing your surfboard, you're going with it because it's so powerful. And when you lose it, it takes a hot second, especially those who are in business for a long time. You know that life happens and you kind of lose the momentum and then it takes a while almost to get that momentum back. So you want to maintain that. But I think it really comes from living on the edge. And I don't know, we didn't really talk about it, but masculine and feminine energies are really powerful. And the masculine is really meant to be living on the edge of his comfort zone, pushing himself outside of his limits. So when every single day you're tapping in, like, what is the most aligned decision that I can be making today? And, you know, we've got our goals in focus. We know where we're moving. But then we're also taking those kind of like big, scary moves that are aligned with what's within. And they're scary and they're hard and they're challenging. There's always going to be momentum that comes from that because we're really moving through our, our fear and our blocks, right? I'm just getting started and I need to save money. Inkfile gave me the best service for the best price. As a freelancer, the low startup cost is what convinced me I could actually do this. My hobby started making me money and Inkfile helped me turn it into an online business. Inkfile formed my business for zero dollars. Who else is going to offer you that? Inkfile.com, where your business begins. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I'm sitting with Kelsey all transparency, Kelsey and I got a little disconnected because that's how Mexico is. Yes. <laughs> the Wi-Fi. It's the only, the only down call is the Dutch Wi-Fi. Kelsey, one of the things I want to touch on is the power of meditation. We were talking mm. about previously before we got disconnected there. We were yeah. talking about uh, being aligned with our spiritual self and actually being able to walk into what our purpose is. Talk about the power of meditation with reference to staying focused and aligned. Yeah, well, I think that like for myself, it's one of those things where A, we're connecting with deeper parts of ourselves like we were talking about earlier, right? So we're connecting with the ones that are actually aligned um, and making sure and checking in with ourselves and having that but also we're doing the visualizations. And I think that that is something that people don't do enough. And what we really, you know, think we understand now is that the unconscious mind really can't understand the difference between what's imagined or what's real, which is such an interesting thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that visualizing every single day, the, the results that you want, you actually achieving those goals. That's really how we like rewire new patterns. We step into these new identities and ultimately Interestingly enough, all of the things that I've like visualized or created like hypnosis around and things like that have all come to fruition. So it really, there is just so much power in that. When we talk about being aligned with our spiritual self and that spiritual relationship, when we talk about being aligned with our purpose and being able to visualize these things. How much have you encountered individuals who are facing imposter syndrome as mm. a barrier to be able to align? Yeah, I would say that like a huge portion of my clients, I mean, if I were to throw a number, it, probably like 80%, like I would say a massive portion of clients, because I feel like there's this really interesting learning curve where you decide, I'm going to do this new thing. And we think that confident people are just like born like that. And we don't understand that confidence is actually built through falling off the horse, getting back on, falling off, getting back on. And so we decide, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to start a business, or I'm going to do this thing. And there's no embodiment, there's no confidence, there's no real skill almost, right? Because we haven't built it. So you're gonna have those feelings of imposter syndrome. I mean, I used to have them all the time as well, like years ago. And I don't know that like, I feel like it's just a natural part of the process. And one of the things that I tell people is like, just learn to like, learn to play the game, like learn to expect, if you expect, oh, I'm probably gonna not feel great. I'm gonna feel wobbly, really squirrely around like sales or whatever. Well, then it just kind of, it's like, rather than just feeling the imposter syndrome, you're like feeling bad about the fact that you're feeling the imposter syndrome. You know what I mean? It's like, how about let's just normalize the fact that you're probably not going to feel that great when you're doing new things. And then you don't have to make yourself bad for not feeling good. And then also for those of us who are doing the things to normalize, like, hey, we do the things and it doesn't always feel that good, right? Right. I always tell individuals that, when you first start doing something you've never done before, you're going to feel silly. You're going to feel ridiculous, scared, nervous, all of these things. And of course, as you said, it's just willing to be able to do. I believe earlier in our conversation, you mentioned just going with it because that innate reaction aligns more with our real purpose than anything else. 
Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. for those for those individuals that start off in the new year, they either set new goals or they go ahead and set one word. I believe you said you're somewhere in between with reference to goals and one word. I do both. Yeah, I think it's really because, like I said, I've been the queen of self-sabotage. If I don't have a very clear path, my emotional state just throws me all over the place. Like my unconscious mind is like, because I'm spiritual, my unconscious mind is like, oh, maybe it's not aligned or maybe it's on your purpose. And <laughs> like it does all these ridiculous things. So it's like, no, I need like Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 goals. I need a to-do list. I need a straight path and I need to just stay on that path. And like, especially, and then I, like I said, this year it's focused. So it's like, mm -hmm. I'm just like back on path, back on track all the time. <laughs> so if you were to use one word that encapsulates all of the work that you're doing, all of your life's work, what would that one word be? The word that's coming up right now is really embodiment. And I think it's because like, I have a tendency to acquire a lot of knowledge. It's very much like polymath type vibes. And knowledge is great, but we really have to learn how to like put it into practice. And I felt like for a long time, like I've been in business for five years, I built a six figure business. And a lot of the times when you're building success until it's like fully grounded in who you are, it kind of feels like even though you're building success, it doesn't feel real. And it kind of, it's like you're hitting the numbers and you're hitting these goals and things are moving yet for some reason, it still doesn't feel like you're in that life. And when it's like that, I think that that's when we, we easily lose that momentum or we sabotage or we do something. So for me, the really big thing that's coming up is like, okay, know who you are, know who your purpose, like know your purpose, take all the knowledge that you currently have, because that's really what I teach is that like, you can have like five different things that you love doing and you can monetize it and you can create this beautiful personal brand that's so unique and wildly different and an encompassing of so many different things. So for me now, where I'm at in my life, it's like, okay, I've done all these different things. I've had all these different niches. I've worked with all these different people, so much knowledge, let's fully embody it. And now just create this really unique experience out on social media and in the, in the world. Those individuals that are connected and want to get connected with you, how could they do so? So the easiest way would be on Instagram. Um, so it's, I know you're probably gonna write it somewhere because it's hard to say, but it's Kelsey Godeho. That would be the best way. Send me a message, tell me what came up, drop your questions. I love connecting with real people. I love knowing your real stories and what you guys are going through. So yeah, come find me there. Awesome, Kelsey, I'm so happy we could do it despite all of the other uh, Rick and Maru, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Thank you so much for having me. This was so great. Yeah, I love what you're up to. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that.